this weekend to go to pitch side monitors when VAR wants to change a decision on a red card whether it's to upgrade to a red from a yellow or to downgrade to a yellow. What are your thoughts on that? Is it about time that they start using the monitors more? Do they need to use them more? I think using the monitor, the only reason for having the monitors is using it, I thought. Um, I don't 100% know, or I don't know 100% why they were not used so far. Um, yeah, we go about the right decision, so if we can make the right decision, then I think we should all use all sources. I don't hope it will happen like five, six times a game that the ref has to go to the monitor, but um, in this, I, I, I read the email, so I, I saw that it will not happen with all decisions. It's just about 100% clarification, and if that's needed, then you have to use all sources. Obviously, we will build this game up given the rivalry between Liverpool and Manchester United, they will want to do all they can to at least slow you up in the title race. How do you see it? It's a very, very important football game. Very important, like games against pretty much all opponents. That's how it is. I think we have to learn dealing with the situ with games like this in the right manner. So um, we, we did not too bad in the past, but we, we, we still can improve. Yeah. I think the game at United is a good example that we, we were not at our best in a game where we should be because of the quality of the opponent. Um, we were not bad that day, but it was not, we were at our best. So that, that's, that's how it is and we have to make it more likely that we are at our best in a game like this. For this, you have to treat it like you treat all very, very important games. For us, the next is always the most important, so we don't make a difference. We all know about the importance it makes to our supporters, but um, uh, or how important it is to our supporters, but um, we cannot, I hope people understand it. It's like we play against Everton. It's, 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 an, it's, a, it's like an a add-on that it's for them we, we play all games for our supporters not only these games the only reason we do it because some people brought us together that we play for Liverpool and Liverpool is um, obviously the natural enemy of some clubs more more we have more natural enemies than other clubs have so um, for the reason is is our history probably um, how successful this club this club was but we said it long ago I said it long ago we have to write our own history and that means we have to play the, 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 the games our way and that's what we try so very very important game most important at that weekend for sure um, for us and so that's the way we want to approach it looking at squad as well do you get Matip and Fabinho back into the squad this weekend and how far away are you from Yes, um, looks like uh, Joel and Fabinho, they trained now completely normal yesterday um, at least and the day before. So that means they are likely to be in the squad. Um, the other three not. What's the three? Yeah, um, not, but they are getting closer and closer. Um, Dejan, I think, will train 100% from Monday on. Um, with the other two, I don't know exactly. There's no, you, I cannot make, I cannot rush it. So I, I, when somebody tells me they are ready, then I take them back in training. Um, I know you said you've done badly against Manchester United recently. You've done amazingly. I think five out of seven have been draws and it's pretty much. It's Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer says we found a nice way of playing against them. You. So have you found a, a nice way for this match to play against them? For this game, no? Hopefully. <laughs> I don't know 100% about the results. I, I know about, about the games, and um, it were not, there were not games like you would imagine when um, United plays against Liverpool. Like That's why I said it's not about how games have been in the past. So there have good, been good times for Liverpool, good times for, for Man United, and then there was always one clear favourite and stuff like this, but both teams tried to 
to win it. And um, I think in the last two years, the, the away games were uh, especially strange from that point of view. Um, so it was like, um, it was of course, I, I said it after the game and I heard Ole got confront, confronted with that as well that I say that United only defended today. I don't know it exactly anymore if I said it, but probably it's true. Um, yes, that's how it is. Um, because I felt it in that moment. It's 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 strange when you play against a high, high, high quality team, but what United still is, and they, yeah, play the way they play. So that uh, makes life really difficult. We had it now with Tottenham, so that's the truth. So we had like uh, after 70 minutes, I think we had around about 80 percent possession. That's not normal. How can you expect something like that? And on the other side, the counter attacks are highest level in the world. That's for Tottenham with the players they have, and that's for Man United for sure as well. I don't say they only count attack, but it's a it's a, a main thing for them to do. If people want to uh, see that as as criticism. I cannot change that, but it's not. It's just a description of the situation, and that that makes it makes of course life for us. Um, more difficult. That's how it is. If it's an open game, then play football here, space there, space stuff like this. Um, but that's the way it is. And while we all love seeing goals, you love stopping them at the moment. Six successive Premier League clean sheets, which is even more than horrible for the previous 15, where you only had two. So has something specifically clicked in the last six matches that you can put your finger on? Or No. <coughs> no we, were not, we were never concerned about not having clean sheets. It's not that we, before the game, the, the main thing, we shout through the dressing room, clean sheet, clean sheet, clean sheet. It's not like that. Uh, you want to have it because it makes it more likely to win the game than as easy as that is. But um, before that, the goals we conceded, they were never the same goals. We conceded all of a sudden goals after set pieces, which was very uncommon before. Um, here, a little lack of concentration. There, uh, a challenge with, a, I don't know, came a millisecond too late or whatever. Um, and they, so they could score. There was not a clear pattern that we saw, okay, that we have to improve. It was all about concentration, getting more and more used to each other, um, luck in the right moment, um, and a very good goalkeeper. There are no clean sheets without a, an outstanding goalkeeper. And um, we have that. Uh, it was not about Adrian when he played because he played so far only good games for us, really good games. So, yeah, you see. And um, it's us getting used to each other, so um, getting more and more convinced about things and how is that luck in the right moment. Life and football without luck is now, you don't have a chance, um, I think, especially Wolves, a uh, couple of times in really, in really good um, at shooting opportunities, Tottenham kind of as well. That was not about defending. Then at the end, it was about the, how they finished it off and and Ali safe. So we have to be honest in this situation. It's not that we defended now completely perfect in the last six games. There's a lot of space for improvement, but we knew that. Okay. George, second one, you said, Michael. Uh, yeah, it's three years ago this week since Trent Alexander Arnold made his Premier League debut. Against United. It was against Manchester United as well. Um, fabulous football, but, but what is it in his makeup, apart from just the natural ability, that's, that's allowed him to develop into the player that he is now? And how much further can he go and improve? And what will make him even better? The games he plays will make him better. The experience he makes will make him better. His teammates will make him better. Being around these boys. Uh, made him better, will make him better. Um, his game understanding will improve. It's already really good, but will will get better. That's a natural thing. Um, apart from injuries, to be honest, I don't see anything what can stop him <coughs> because of the, because the attitude and his private background is just so good. He's so um, passionate, yes, very, but calm as well. So that's... Um, <coughs> Very, very good um, basis his family uh, created there for him, and um, he's a very close relationship to them, which is good. And um, so they keep him grounded, not sure he needs it, to be honest. But if he would start flying, then I know exactly who would <laughs> get him back. I don't have to do that. Um, and so that's how, how when, you, when you are a talented footballer and you have a, a, a an outstanding attitude. If you love the game as much as he loves the game, and you have the background 
he has, then that's a very good. It's pretty likely that you will have a proper career. So um, a lot of good things came together, and so now we have this kind of player. Long, long, long may it continue. If you look at United, and maybe uh, a lack of consistency is to do with the gap between you and them, but. They've got an awful lot of pace at the top end of the pitch, haven't they? If you look individually and collectively. So how will that sort of how will that inform your tactics on, on Sunday for, for the game? Yep. <laughs> How it always does. So I think it's my, it's 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 a majority of the time we we, we face teams who are, who are set up like this. We want to be dominant. We have to be dominant. Most of the teams we are dominant. Not all, not always exactly like we want, but majority of the time we have the ball. Means you have to protect these situations. You have to be as creative um, as possible. You have to be. Offensive football only works if you use the full size of the pitch in the, oppo in the opposite half, I would say. That makes you pretty vulnerable in the moment when you lose the ball. And so you have to make sure that you don't lose the ball, or if you lose the ball, you have to win it back as quick as possible, or if you don't do that, then you have to be you know, pr protected in a best possible way. That's how football works and that's exactly the better the team gets, the better the player gets, the more important it is that you are that you have this mindset. You, know, you cannot only be focused on offensive things. Uh, we respect them a lot. We respect them a lot. They are not how I said that's not only a counter attacking team. That's how they played against us. We made an analyze and in all the games they played they had done a, a playing build up even against Man City against us they played it was eighty percent long build up. So how can we know exactly how they will set up? Maybe they found now a spe specific um, Liverpool, uh, the way to play against Liverpool, but the difference between playing at Old Trafford and playing at Enfield is massive, and we want to show that as well. Um, yeah, how is that? Um, it's it's just um, it's a football game. It's a and and there are specific things you have to do. And the better the opponent gets, the more consistent you have to bring them on the pitch. And this game asks us for. Perfection. That's how it is. Because how I said, you lose the ball in the wrong moment, and then it's the train starts going, and um, that's what is clear. But it's about us to make sure that that will not happen. <coughs> relegated. <laughs> he got relegated. Yeah. yeah. You said earlier about Liverpool having natural enemies or some natural enemies. Do you feel this season you? Gained more enemies because of the form you are in and the dominance you've had in the No. No, no, no. I, I, I still don't know enough about the specific Liverpool history. So, I, But look, we have, when we play United, it's the most important game of the year. When we play um, Everton, it's the most important game of the year. So um, now City is getting more and more this kind of trend. Um, it's only football enemy. We don't have to make it bigger than it is. Yeah, so, um, but. How I said last year, second last match day, going to Newcastle, I had no clue there were any problems in the past between Newcastle and Liverpool, but it felt like the only thing they wanted to have that day, not only winning the game, but on top of that, that we will not be champion. That's only the feeling I got, nobody told me that. But it, the game was so intense, it was incredible. N Newcastle, I think, that they didn't play for anything really, like um, um, on top of that, like maybe a, a, another position in the table, but it was thought that they had to stay in the league or going for European league or something like that, if I'm 100% right. So it, that's that special. Uh, you go there and think, oh, anything happened in the past? And so you feel that quite some time when, when we go somewhere, and I don't think that happened happens to all the team. I don't think we gained any new of them, but uh, we have already enough, to be honest. It's already tough enough. I think I'm, yeah, okay. The, uh, you're supposed to be related to the new, no? No, no, sorry, it's uh, country of the South, so yeah, changed. Yeah, just wondering what you made of the decision to change the African combinations from, say, a summer tournament to back to a winter one, the impact that's going to have on you on the next, next January, February? Do we really want to open this book now? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I couldn't respect the, I couldn't respect the, the African Cup of Nations more than I do because I, I I like the competition. I watched it a lot in the past. 
in my life. Very interesting tournament. Difficult, both difficult circumstances for a lot of times and um, players, what they make of it. Sensational players. You see the first time there, but not the last time because they show up in, uh, in Europe and uh, everywhere. Oh, really interesting. But it's an obvious problem that you play a tournament in the middle of a season, like I did, that it makes more sense for Africa. Um, to play it maybe um, in, the, in, in our winter, uh, their winter as well, so when the weather is better uh, for them. Um, I get that. The, the only problem is, it's again, it's a general problem. So a couple of things which are not okay. One thing is um, the FIFA plans a tournament in the summer of 21. Yeah. A week later, so the actual African Cup of Nations would have started, I think, or maybe two weeks later. So another tournament for a lot of uh, world-class players. I mentioned that in the past. Um, not sure if that was that was part of the decision <laughs> when they thought, okay, we can, it makes no sense to play it after that tournament, so let's play it again in the in the winter. Don't know, or the weather, or what, the, or was the weather the real? And it's that's one problem. That means another tournament. It's just it's too many tournaments still, and that's one thing. The other thing, and it doesn't. That's true. It doesn't help African players. So we will not sell Sadio Mo or Nabi now because they have a tournament in Feb in January and February. Of course not. But if you have to make a decision about bringing in a player, it's a massive one. Because you don't have a play, you know before the season already. You have a, for four weeks roundabout. You don't have him, so that's normal process. So as a club, we have to think about things like that. It doesn't help the players for sure not. But these decisions are made without asking players, without asking managers, without asking anybody. Just a decision. The FIFA, who should sort all of that, kind of as the head of all these different um, um, associations, doesn't look like being involved. They're still happy having their 21 team World Cup, offering a lot of money. Obviously, I don't know the exact numbers, but it must be a lot of money for all the clubs involved. <laughs> Means the clubs are like, well, maybe we can play it, ask the managers. They would say no, but yes, we get paid off this money and stuff like this. It's a strange situation. Eh? So I know the discussions will start in the moment that we ask for lesser games and everybody will tell us and take lesser money. So, yeah. I'm ready to do so. Can can say it here. I'm ready to do so, but I don't think it's just one problem. Eh? This country, whatever, European championships, world championships, all this stuff. It's all we do always like nobody can live without that. It's like it's a natural right to have this, but we forget in this moment that these tournaments are played by players. They don't have a break. So, and I I feel massively for Harry Kane. And now I heard maybe it's not in in the, in the Euros. So my first time some English people in the FA will start thinking, oh, man, oh, too many games maybe. Always something has to happen that we start really thinking about it. So now we send all these guys in the summer to uh, in the winter again, in the middle of a season to a tournament in different circumstances and stuff like this, coming back to the African Cup of Nations. It's not easy to take. About the welfare of the players or stuff like that, nobody thinks. So these are, these are really important things. So again, FIFA, UEFA, FAs of all countries have to come together and finally sort that. In this moment, the FIFA decides things without talking to UEFA, the UEFA decides things without UEFA making the Champions League bigger. <laughs> so, um, and then nobody talks to each other. It's just making a decision. It's a little bit like in England. In England, FA says, okay, we have uh, only from the fourth or fifth round having the re-game. Re and the Carabao Cup says, as long as they have the, the, the re-games, we don't cancel the, the second semi-final. Ask one of the teams involved in the semi-finals what they think about this semi-final, playing another game in that period. So, uh, and after that, you win a competition. If you win it, it's great. If you lose it, nobody remembers that you were in the final. That's the truth, what nobody says about, yes, it's silverware, great. But you push the boys through and all these things. It's all, never, never, never be really thinking about it. Everybody has his own reasons to keep the competition like it is and involve new competitions or more play uh, more games and stuff like this and that's the problem and at the end it leads to the little problem maybe it was part of that to the African Cup of Nations going back to January and February which is a, for us a catastrophe 
in that moment, losing three players. On top of that, we have absolutely no power. So if we would say, um, oh, we don't let him go, the, the player is suspended. How is that possible that the, that the company who pays the player cannot decide that the player has to stay or not, for example? Because if you would say, let's play the African Cup of Nations, but the players play in different in other countries, not in Africa, for example, cannot play the, it still would be a great tournament, but not the superstars, but the superstars of tomorrow, for example. I don't say that's the, re that's the solution for it. It's just strange that we have absolutely no say. If a player is injured here, and we say he's injured, he cannot play for us, we have to send him to Africa, and then he, they have a look. Yeah, maybe in one or two weeks he's back. It's all things, and by the way, it's with, with all the other things, it's the same. So if uh, FIFA, we don't have any say, we just sit there and plan the route, plan the flight for the boys. And here you go, here you have them. And these are all things which is nowadays should not be like this. But I speak here about it and nobody will listen. It's like mo the biggest waste of time ever. The Mona from Liverpool or whatever is again uh, uh, on, on track. So that's, it's, it's, as long as nothing changes, I will say it all the time. It's because it's about the players. It's not one second about me. Yes, there, are so many, there are so many things to sort, but all these guys never find time to sit all together on one table and discuss that and make a, a general schedule. Here we have it. And on all these different games you have to play, yeah, here is a break for the players, right? Let's respect that. But if you have that break, then don't make a re-game in this break or whatever, then this would help massively. Incredible. It's the best watch at the moment. <laughs> really, do you think Jude Clock is the best at the moment? And then, uh, I'm from Madrid. Uh, do you think Simeone and Atletico de Madrid needs Cavani to win Liverpool? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're welcome. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, easy. The first answer is easy to answer. Uh, the first question is easy to answer. No, I'm, I'm sure I'm not. So, that's easy. Um, the second, um, but it's nice that Arian says it, but if I would be um, employed by me, then I would say the same. <laughs> so, um, and um, the second one was Cavani. Cavani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that uh, Morata and Felix are already dangerous enough, so I don't hope. Um, and Diego, is could he be back? At the moment? Not, but maybe. Correa is. Ah, he is. So, good. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there have been enough good strikers. I hope they don't sign Cavani. But I heard um, Thomas Tuchel said um, he needs him as well. So, maybe. So, but um, I have didn't start really analyzing Atletico. I watched them a lot, but um, not analyze on an analyzed basis. We will do that, and then we will see if we have to involve Cavani or not. That's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Welcome. Thank you.